Hey friend, we're here at the gear cart. I recently upgraded my personal camping kit over to this ultra light camping gear, spending close to $1,000 Canadian. And do I feel taken advantage of by the outdoor industry? Of course I do. That's an absurd amount of money. Some of these items cost three times the cost of moderately good outdoor equipment over on this side. And I was kind of just personally curious, is it actually worth the increase in price? Some of these items I'm pleasantly surprised with the quality and I'm not going back. In other ones, the trade-off isn't as clear and so I, it might not be worth it. I'm gonna compare these items head to head in this video and if you want to skip to the different chapter markers for an item that you're most interested in, feel free to do that. Uh, at the start, I bought all of this stuff with my own money. None of this was sent to me so you know my uh, opinion is, <laughs> is fought for with my cash. And I I gotta talk about the sponsor of this video and that is Squarespace, the company that I use to build my websites. I'll tell you more about them deeper in this video. When I go on personal adventures, I take the Explore series bags from Shimoda. It's prioritizing camera equipment protection, frankly, and then I strap a dry bag underneath for extra camping stuff. And I did a whole Moto Day adventure walking through the everyday carry items that I might take in a camera bag like this. I pare some of that down when I actually go ski touring or things where I'm doing overnights up on mountains. When I pack for work, I take the larger X70 bag, which is a 70 liter bag. So we're talking 70 liters here, right? This is not ultra light backpacking by any sense. And because camera equipment is so heavy, I've always kind of just been of the opinion that you know, I'm taking so much weight anyways, I might as well just, just tough it out. Those weight savings to me just didn't really seem to be that worth it. The perspective I'm coming at this equipment with is I kind of think of myself as like a six out of 10 adventure outdoor guy where I'm not fully hardcore where I do weeks at a time or months at a time and dream of these big long-term hardcore projects and I'm counting every gram and calorie. I, that, that's just not me. But one thing that kind of shifted my perspective on this was seeing my buddy Craig who does some incredible through hiking films that if you haven't seen, they're just, they're really good, but seeing not only the weight savings that he has with his ultralight gear, but the space savings. So the volume is smaller. And that to me was kind of like a aha moment. So when some of these pieces of equipment wore out, that's what made me decide when I get new stuff, let's try buy the more expensive stuff and uh, see if it's actually worth it. But I know someone who through hiked all across America with only his socks and some garbage bags. He's way tougher than you are. This gear is useless. Yeah, kind of, kind of right. It, it kind of is useless. You can, the best gear to start with is what you can afford to buy at that time or borrow or get at a thrift store. This is the sleeping bag I've been using since about 2012. And this is the bag that I just bought and I've been absolutely loving. So this is the least ultralight item that I got. You can definitely get bags that pack down smaller. I chose this bag because I wanted a better three season bag that could work in a snow cave that wasn't so tight on me. I've slept miserable in sleeping bags basically my whole life when I have to zip them closed because I'm a shoulder sleeper and I just can't find a way to be comfortable inside of a mummy bag. And when I like need to rotate from shoulder to shoulder, I'm like rotating the whole sleeping bag on top of the sleeping pad. It just has never gone well for me. It's got this really cool vertical baffling that I've never seen before. It expands and contracts as you move your legs and feet around. There's plenty of room in the toe box for my larger feet. I didn't choose to have bigger feet, but they can be annoying in so many scenarios. Finding shoes, for example, but I have size 14 feet and fitting those in the bottom of a sleeping bag is always kind of awkward. Not in this XL bag, it fits perfectly. Weight for this guy in a waterproof stuff sack is 1,811 grams. Weight for my old sleeping bag, which is in a non-waterproof stuff sack, is 1,942. So not massive weight savings, but definitely more cozy, definitely warmer, and the volume decrease very much appreciated. Only downside is that it is down. Uh, so you gotta make sure that it doesn't get wet, otherwise down when it gets wet is just kind of like, it's not very, not very fun. Sleeping pads. So this is kind of the pad that I started with. And when I moved over to these inflatable ones, I was kind of blown away. This one packs pretty large and it's 725 grams. This is like just kind of your average middle of the road inflatable sleeping pad. When I went over to the Neo Air, that kind of blew my mind because this being like the size of a Nalgene at 611 grams, this was just kind of amazing to me, the fact that it got so small. So when this guy, uh, I usually use this without a ground sheet underneath it when I'm just bivvied at the top of a summit overnight and rocks and stuff have, have kind of started to make this thing deflate. So I made the upgrade over to this ultralight, even smaller. It's called the Neo Air 
uber light. It's uber light, man. And this one is 323 grams, so almost half the weight. Out of all the items, this one is probably the least necessary to go the uber ultra light route. Already the Neo Air, like it's an amazing sleeping pad. I would be fine with it. I would get this one again. It's not necessary to do the, the price jump up to this guy. What I do like about this guy is that I got a slightly wider version. So I've got more width. There's a, there's a comfort perspective from it. I wanted just more space <laughs> to, to lie on the ground. Space it takes up is roughly about half. Maybe I'm squeezing them incorrectly. It's about half the size, roughly. Uh, really nice, but I am nervous that the thinner fabric, especially seeing as I'm tough on my sleeping pads, is not, gonna, is not gonna do well. The thinner material, I'm worried that I'm gonna put more holes in it and we'll have to patch it more often. Okay, pillows. Yep, I'm the kind of guy that brings a pillow. Because I'm a shoulder sleeper, I find just stuffing up some clothes in the head of my sleeping bag doesn't create enough support. So typically what I do is my down jacket put into the head of my sleeping bag and then do the pillow either on top or below that. And I've moved through some iterations here. This guy was my earlier favorite. Uh, the problem is, is that it takes up quite a bit of space, 244 grams. I like that it's not inflated, so that way you don't get that feeling like you're sleeping on a dinghy for swimming on the lake with. I just can't stand that sensation. And the struggle of this is that it's at the end of its life and it's getting kind of frumpy. And on a trip where I forgot to bring a sleeping pillow, I got this. And <laughs> this is all right, but it does still create that sensation of, of just like you're sleeping on an inflated bag. And that is certainly not my favorite sensation. The plastic feeling on it, you definitely wanna put your jacket on top because I can't stand that on my ear. The size of it is definitely ideal for actually sleeping with. I like the size. Uh, it's packed down size though. It almost feels like as much as my sleeping pad, which is just too, it's quite big. It makes it feel like you're taking on a lot for a pillow and that just does not feel worth it on those quick mountain bivvies. So then I don't bring it, but then I sleep miserable. So that's what I'm trying to solve. This is 282 grams. This is where the absolute joy of this airhead pillow comes in. And I would have expected that this would not be that worth it, but the, just the sheer size of this little guy is incredible. And the comfort of it is certainly good enough. It's got a really nice kind of micro fibery casing on it. The internal air pocket on this one feels very similar to the Chinook, but this one, because it's got like a little bit of like, I don't know, some kind of foam in between the air cell and the fabric, this one just feels more comfortable to my head. It's almost three times the cost, but to me, it's just absolutely worth it. See how much it weighs. It's 173 grams. Something I impulse bought which I'm the most embarrassed about in this video because of how expensive it is and what it is, is I bought an ultralight stool. <laughs> like, I don't know, just like the complete impulse purchase. I, Cause apparently I'm too good to find a rock to sit on, but I bought a Helinox ultralight stool. And <laughs> I mean, come on. So this is the typical pack down size of a standard, little camp chair like this. And these are amazing for when you're actually at a place for longer or you're doing lots of hiking and you really do value that sit down rest time. This is the REI brand. Ours are, our, ours are used just all the time. I use them actually at our house because they're a cozy seating position and in van life we just use these all the time. So, but the pack down size of these makes them a little too big to take on just most, most ultralight hikes and so I thought, why don't I get an ultralight stool? And it is ultralight and it is nice and small, but this is uh, just a little bit absurd. Probably should not have bought it. I probably should have just gotten one of those butt pads because when I'm ski touring, sitting down on the snow, it'd be nice to have a little insulated butt pad when you're making lunch or something like that. And uh, this probably wouldn't even work in the snow. So this, this was just, this was bad idea. Shouldn't have got it, impulse purchase. What's not a silly idea is if you like some of the cinematics that you're seeing in this video and you enjoy storytelling or adventures by 
Canadian blokes like myself, I think you might enjoy what we have coming down the pipeline because there's some rad videos that I would just be sad if you missed. We've got a bike packing video coming and I think it's a, it's a really fun personal adventure where I, I try something that scares me. So I think if you're interested in those kinds of videos, you definitely wanna hit subscribe and then maybe turn on notifications because sometimes YouTube doesn't share those videos with you. But I think you'll find all of it pretty intriguing and adding value to your entertainment consumption lifestyle because I certainly have a lot of fun trying to combine adventure filmmaking with my own personal adventures. But we've got some more stuff coming, especially as we go into the fall that I'm very excited about. I wanna take a quick moment before we jump onto the next item to tell you about the sponsor of this video, and that is Squarespace. They're a service that I use to build my own personal websites, and a website is so important if you're trying to run your freelancing career, if you have a film you're launching, you need a home base for it to live. If you're just relying on other people's social media platforms, you're at the whims of what they decide to do with their algorithms. But if you've got a place where you can deliberately send people to and they will find your work that you have control of, that is super good. A place where you can say, hey, here's me. This is what I wanna do more of. That's what I do with my own production company. I built my website with Squarespace. I used one of their templates and I found it really simple to get my images on there and make it look like mine quickly to change the fonts, adapt, change things. It's a drag and drop website builder. Really straightforward to use. You don't need to know any code, no patches, no upgrades. They've got incredible customer service and they've got everything there as you wanna expand and adapt your website from e-commerce functionality to sell your own stuff to scheduling calls with clients. It's all built right in. It's ready at your fingertips and I highly recommend if you've got the inclination that maybe, maybe I should get to a website someday, maybe I should do that. It's a lot more simple than you might expect you can build something in 30 minutes. You're probably gonna fall in love with it quickly. And then when you're ready to commit, make sure that you use my code for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. By far the biggest change I made in this kit to be more ultra light, to facilitate more backpacking style trips, and to also make those experiences where I'm sleeping exposed up on a mountain more safe from severe weather in case a weather system does move in because typically I've been pretty fortunate where if I'm up on a mountain with just a sleeping bag and my rain jacket, bad weather hasn't come in on me most times. But what does disrupt those sleeping scenarios is wind. I do find in Alpine, the wind, especially from like 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. when it's starting to get light out, just drives me nuts and I have a very hard time sleeping. So that's where the benefits of a tent where you kind of feel protected and cozy and the wind isn't right on your face. I really appreciate that, but clearly this tent right here is not by any stretch what, what I should be backpacking with. 2,577 grams. Yeah, this is not anywhere close to an ultralight tent, but it's a tent. I, for the first time, went to a bivy bag. And I've borrowed a bivy bag before, or a bivy sack. Technically what it is is just like an extra layer of protection to go around your sleeping bag so you're not sleeping just on the ground and hopefully protecting you from some water. So I bought the Outdoor Research Helium bivy. And the reason why I got this one is it comes with one small micro pole that helps hold the fabric of the bivy bag away from your face. I'm happy with this Outdoor Research Helium Bivy. I was nervous in this fall condition that it was gonna create a lot of condensation inside. In fact, what I experienced with my sleeping bag in about five degrees Celsius weather with rain is I actually got too warm. So with my sleeping bag zipped all the way up, I was getting too warm. So through the night I had to zip it open more and I had to utilize this bug screen. So I am thrilled that it has a bug screen. So that way I can have it zipped all the way around me and actually close it. A lot of the bivvies do not have that. You're either completely enclosed in a garbage bag feeling or you have it zipped open and you're exposed to bugs. Where I live, that doesn't work out for me very well. So having this bug screen is amazing, the fact that you can close it. And what can I say? It's a really nice small bivy bag that for me, I'm thinking if I find myself in an alpine scenario and it's just gusting wind, it's gonna increase the chances that I can get longer durations of sleep with that wind just whipping across my face. So I'm gonna use this more on my Alpine missions, especially to protect that new ultralight sleeping pad I got. So the trade-off of the smaller sleeping pad is that I definitely have to have something underneath it to protect it from the rocks because it feels very fragile. Is it better than just a one or two person ultralight tent? I don't know. I like the simplicity of it. 
I like that the sleeping pad goes inside of it so that's not moving around and I'm not rolling off it in the nighttime. I like that I could probably use this in a snow cave to keep water from getting inside my stuff. Uh, but it's, I'm sure there's some amazing ultralight tents out there that can get down to this size footprint and maybe even small, well, probably not smaller, but I'm sure there's some really nice ultralight tents. One thing that I ran into is that when it starts raining, where do I put all the camera gear? Where do I put it? Forgot to weigh this, too lazy to pack it up. Let's put a bin on, tear it, 467 grams. An upgrade I made that's definitely not in the ultralight category, but I've certainly been really appreciating is this new model of jet boil, which has a simmer feature. So I've just been using this Stanley stuff with a small little micro stove. So this is 401 grams and you still need your fuel source. And the jet boil is 381. But a jet boil is kind of one of those things that I always looked down upon. Uh, until there's like the 30th time that I'm camping with other people and their water is boiling in like a third of the time mine is and I'm hungry and I'm cold and I'm watching them make, you know, their third round of coffee in the morning and I'm still struggling to get my little flame to like heat up the bottom of my pot. And I could get one of those thermal wraps or something which would probably make my little tiny stove do better. But the speed at which this guy boils water is mind bending, but the new models have a quick attachment for using normal pots and pans. So you can just take this attachment, put it on top, and that immediately gets you a surface where you could use basically any pot on top. And the new control of fuel rate lets you have fine tuned enough control to just simmer because before it was like on like a blowtorch or off, and this one has a lot more finessed control. And so this is not ultralight, like ultralight guys don't even take stoves sometimes, but uh, I like warm food, especially when I'm suffering, and this improvement has been massive for me. So this is the new personal camping kit. The fact that this right here is all I need to do overnight minus food is kind of, kind of incredible to me, and that's not just suffering through an overnight, like this is living in kind of luxury as far as I'm concerned. The fact that I have a pillow, the fact that I'm on a good sleeping pad, this being my personal kit, I mean, the fact that I can take my stove and all of my sleeping gear fits inside this seat, seat post bag with tons of volume left to go. So I could basically, I could cram so much more in here and just have to worry about where am I gonna put the sleeping bag. The fact that this can be my setup is, is kind of exciting. It was also very, very expensive. So is that increased expense actually worth it? Thank you so much for joining in on this video with me and thank you as well for offering your perspectives in the comments because I always highly appreciate that, especially when it comes to gear because my experience is pretty limited. So I know when people come looking for purchase decisions, having that collective back and forth down in the comments is great. That's gonna be it for this one. Remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.